Hi everyone. Hi mom. I'm back from holidays. Well, I'm still on holidays, but it's now a staycation. So I get to play in my room with some of the things that uh, I bought recently on my trip and a few things that I uh, bought before I left. So one of them being this awesome die, a Sizzix Biggs die, and it's the uh, dragonfly and it comes with the embossing folder as well which is really cool so I cut one out of just a piece of scrap and so what I want to do is show you guys how I use my embossing enamel um, as well as some of the stains that uh, the you know the Tim Holtz line comes out with um, I'm working on a book right now and you know I like using elements that are from nature um, you guys know this butterflies birds now that I have this dragonfly I'm so excited because it's really awesome and so I've been playing this morning and thought that I would do a little tutorial for you I've had a few people ask me you know to show them how I use the embossing enamel now I believe my embossing enamel uh, it came in a kit and they didn't the only name was on the outside of the package which I didn't realize till I'd thrown it out <laughs> so I'm not sure but I believe it's Stampendous is the brand name of the embossing enamel it comes in all different colors uh, and my kit came with um, some of them were already mixed uh, with white and gold and and some glitter and different things like that so what I did was um, because you know I'm never satisfied I took an empty Martha Stewart uh, shaker and I mixed my own so there's all kinds of things going on in this one which is what I'm going to show you uh, part of it is the gold embossing enamel part of it is it this is kind of a platinum color embossing enamel I did throw a little bit of the Martha Stewart copper penny embossing powder as well as glitter now there's turquoise there's mm, copper I think is in here I don't know there like I just did a whole bunch of stuff in there oh there's gold that's what it is gold in there and then because embossing enamel is much chunkier than embossing powder and it melts differently um, you'll find that it doesn't mix very well so you know it's very random the colors that you're gonna get so if you don't like that then you might not wanna mix in the lighter weight powders because they won't mix properly like evenly is what I'm trying to say so let's go ahead and start now this is completely random I you know there's no thought involved all I do is kinda of just play around till I get the look that I want uh, because the stains they come with the dauber top you don't need to shake them up the only ones you need to shake up are like the metallics you know to get a more even and some of them even have a ball in them this one I don't think does at least I've shaken it a million times and it it doesn't seem to have a ball in it but you should shake those ones up so I'm gonna go ahead and just randomly pounce on some color and I'll show you some of the ones that I've done after I show you how I do this. So it's just, yeah, you just keep playing. I'm going to add some Victorian velvet. This one was tumble glass. I like the Victorian velvet in that it's not super pink. And this one is the old paper. I love adding a bit of green. Anything I do that's vintage, I like the green. Just, um, green was, yeah, used a lot, like an old kind of a green. And it happens to be my favorite color, so I like to use it. Now when I cut uh, this out, there's actually two layers of paper right at the moment. 
And I'll tell you why I did that, because um, when I first started playing with these, I used a coffee filter. Because <laughs> I thought, hmm, I wonder what that'll do. So I left them together because coffee filters absorbed moisture really well. So I ended up getting two uh, dragonflies. And uh, yeah. Now I want this muddied. If you don't want it muddied, you can dry it in between because it will stay wet for a little while. But I don't want perfection. And you know, you have to remember a lot of this is going to get covered with the embossing enamel. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and just heat set that. could go ahead and just leave it like that you know it's very pretty okay so I'm just gonna separate these now now this doesn't uh, work as well it did leak through some so you get you know another layer just you know it's lightly covered but I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna use that later I'm just gonna clean up a little bit here All right, now, I have three separate pieces of scrap paper that I use for this particular thing. One is so that I can stamp on with my Versamark. So this one I've used several times. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take, now I've tried the Distress embossing and I don't feel personally that it sticks well enough to it. And I think it's because like it's a distress thing going on. I don't know why it doesn't, but I prefer the Versamark. Now, I don't like to cover the entire thing because then that defeats the purpose of <laughs> coloring your image. So I lightly do it, you know, that way it, it only will stick in some parts where you were a little heavier handed than others. So that's all I'm going to do with that. I'm going to transfer this now to a dry sheet. This one here. And I'm going to take my mix and I'm going to try and mix it up. And I like to use the, you know, the shaker. I just think you don't get as much and that's kind of the look I'm going for. So. That's all I'm going to put on there, and I'm going to lift it and tip it to get the big chunks off. I'm going to move this out of my way. And then I'm going to put it on another piece of paper. Okay, so here's the fun part. Now, I'm going to hold this up because I need to get the heat gun underneath. So you'll be able to see the reaction. Now, depending on what you're putting this on, it'll happen quick. If it's a little thicker paper, it takes a while. All you need to know is that you want to keep your tool, your heat tool moving. Otherwise, yeah, I'll probably smoke. <laughs> I, it, I've never had one light on fire, but uh, yeah, I've had it smoke. So make sure you keep it moving, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. You want it fairly close, not super close, but fairly close so that it will start to melt. Keep it moving. This is a really thin piece of paper I'm using. I don't know, it was packaging from something. Okay, you can start to see it's melting a little bit. I 
there's the smoke. <laughs> Okay, now, I'm not done, but now that it's started to melt a little, I can now go from the top. So I start quite a ways up in the air, away from my image, so that I'm not going to blow off any that isn't really stuck. Okay, so I'm going to start way up high. And you don't need to move it around so much when you're way up high. Once you start to see it really stick, then you can get closer. And as you get closer, you're going to see it spread out. Okay, so I'm getting closer. Alright, see, you can see some of it blowing. There we go. Now enamel stays hot longer than embossing powder so you want to be careful that you don't get anything you know like your tools stuck on it um, try and just push it off <clears throat> so there is my dragonfly now I'm gonna hold that up for you and hopefully the light isn't horrendous let me just move my lamp a little that's better for you or not very pretty though isn't it I really love the embossing enamel now you can also uh, if you're putting embossing enamel on thicker and you're getting it quite molten you can put on some glitter glass and it will adhere while it's really hot and don't touch it till it's cool and then shake off the excess so that's one of the ones I've done. This is um, another one. Now this one is done out of the um, coffee filter. So it's quite sheer on the back. And these are all done with coffee filters. So this one I did quite light with the embossing so that a lot of the color came through. And then this one I did with a solid enamel. So one color. And you get a really cool look. So you can also do really neat things. Now this isn't enamel. This is embossing powder. So what I started with was a coffee filtered uh, dragonfly. I don't know why I find that hard to remember the name of this. <laughs> I used my paint my watercolor paints and I just kept layering and layering and layering until I got the colors that I really wanted then I went over it with some watered down uh, Viva gold in the turquoise and then some gold paint as well let that dry and then I just randomly this is where I used the distress one and covered that and of course it didn't cover solid because I do have quite you know high ridges on this so it doesn't get down you know too far if you find that you don't like that and you want to add more you can just use your Versamark pen which is what I did in some of the spots that really to me it looked funny and I needed more so uh, I just used my Versamark pen and then went back over it with some clear embossing powder and that's the look that I got so here's one I did with flowers and that's just done with um, the platinum enamel and um, microbeads. So that was a little hard. 
gonna be honest because <laughs> you don't want them blowing off your flower and they roll they're round so that was interesting uh, this one I did just the center with the microbeads and those are from Sarah Elliott she gifted me a bunch of microbeads so I'm trying to use some you know different things like that I have this stuff which is the um, these are like mica chips they're kind of chunky uh, and you know they I don't know I think I might use sticky powder with that the judikins and uh, you know see what will happen with that they're, they're kind of big to me so I wouldn't want them on something like this because they're it's fairly small um, but anyway that's what came in the kit that's why I'm showing you that uh, and I believe I got those online no I got them at Joanne's when I actually went down uh, one month I had uh, taken a trip down to Joanne's and saw them there and thought well it's all the rage so I'm gonna try them well I didn't realize it had all these other things it had flock in it and I never use flock um, you know I had stuff in there that I, I probably would never use and so I just started watching videos, you know, on what people are doing with this enamel and, you know, the different things that come with it. Because I have a bunch of vials of glitter glass and stuff like that, too. So it works great for glitter glass. Uh, yeah. So there you go. There's my tutorial. And I'm so glad to be back and back on the air. So uh, sneak peek of <laughs> my next journal. Ta-da! So this is the one that I demoed for you guys on, you know, how I cover an envelope. And this is the uh, the little envelope that Crafty Irina had gifted to me. And I'm turning it into a little tiny journal. And this is a, a, an image from Ephemera's Vintage Garden. And um, yeah, so I'm not using the kit, but I am using the image on the front. And it's just, um, it's time to start using up my stash of papers. So that's what I'm doing, a fairly simple little journal. Um, but somebody had said that they wanted to see me do, actually make this into a journal. So that's my next one. Okay, you guys, uh, leave a comment and uh, tell me what you think. And if you do have it and you haven't used it, give you know, just play with it. It's so much fun um, and you get fantastic results from it. Have a great day, you guys. Bye.